Hello and welcome. Let's get started as we have a lively group of presenters today. Welcome to season three, episode three of Visit Lauderdale Stay, Play, Dine virtual webinar series. My name is Tracy Vine. I am the Senior VP of Global Leisure Sales at Visit Lauderdale. I am joined today virtually with our leisure team and today's co-presenters, Gabriel Martinez, hey Gabriel, and Caitlin Etchevers. Please note, this episode is being recorded and will be available for viewing along with all previous 11 episodes on sunny.org backslash travel trade. Thank you all so much for joining us for this very special webisode. Trust me, we will have fun today, so stay tuned. And for the record, we have a record setting number of registered advisors again, so we're really thrilled. As you well know, February is Black History Month which gives us the opportunity to amplify and honor the great contributions the Black community has made throughout U.S. history. Here in Greater Fort Lauderdale, we feel our greatest strength is our diversity and take great pride in the fact that we are one of the most diverse metropolitan areas in the country. So today we want to celebrate and recognize the influence, the fortitude, and contributions of our Black-owned businesses that make Greater Fort Lauderdale the welcoming and compassionate destination it is for visitors and residents alike. I am so pleased to introduce our special guest today and contributing partners. We are very honored to have Commissioner Dale Holness with us today to share his love and knowledge of our great destination. But first, let me introduce today's presenters who you will soon hear from on location and discover not only how zealous they are about they, what they do, but how passionate they are and enthusiastic about their communities. So, David Neary from Island Space Caribbean Museum, welcome. Andy Ingram from the National Association of Black Hotel Owners, Operators, and Developers, and Horizon International Group, welcome, Andy. Jeff Walter Harris from Noodle Station, Walter, good day. Michael Abel from Rural Wine Bistro. Dave, Michael, and Stephen Smith from Vegan Fine Foods and Vegan Fine Cafe. I am now so grateful to introduce our special guest today, Commissioner Dale V.C. Holness. Commissioner Holness is an impactful public servant and business leader with more than 40 years of experience advocating for racial equity and small minority and women-owned businesses. He was named Legacy Magazine's Public Official of the Year and South Florida Chapter of the American Society for Public Administration 2017, elected official of the year. His political record is well documented in his many years as a Lauderdale City Commissioner and Vice Mayor, and currently as the Broward County District 9 Commissioner. Just last year, Commissioner Holness served as Mayor of Broward County, chairing the Broward Black elected officials and establishing a Criminal Justice Review Board. His focus will remain on generating millions of dollars for Black owned businesses supporting successful campaigns for Black elected officials, providing mentorship, and leading the development of the Broward Black Action Plan and the Racial Equity Task Force. Lastly, I would like to note that Commissioner Holness is recognized as Broward County's hardest working commissioner. So we are very honored he has taken time out of his busy schedule to join us today. Commissioner Holness, I turn it over to you. Buenvenidos, buenvenue. Namaste, shalom, assalamu alaikum. Welcome, Wagwan. South Florida is home to 1,200,000 black people. About 24% of the population in all of South Florida and in Broad County, it's 30 plus percent. This is the melting pot of the world and it's real. And, and you have all the kind of food you can get out of any pot from every place in the world to enjoy here in South Florida. Uh, whether you are into mofongo, soul food, curry goat, oxtail, lamb beef, whatever, roti, whatever you like, you can find here in South Florida. Of course, we have the tra traditional European foods, the, the Italians, the everything you can think of in terms of a palate that you could have is here in South Florida. And in terms of the cultural diversity, it is powerful. 
we have every kind of music available also. And I love to dance a little salsa, a little bachachas. You want calypso, soca, compa, reggae, old school, you name it. We have it here in this piece of paradise called Broward County. And we look forward to you visiting soon and enjoying this great cultural diversity, this great climate that we have. Where I know some place where you might be, it might be below zero. We never get to below zero. We stay uh, a regular 60 to 70, 80 degrees on the upper side. And when it real, it's really hot, it's 90 something. Where you are, it might be 100 and something degrees. Uh, so we have all of that to enjoy here in South Florida. And in terms of the rich history of Blacks in South Florida, Bahamians were some of the first earlier settlers here in South Florida in terms of Black population. And then came folks from Georgia and, and uh, North Florida and other parts of uh, Southern United States in terms of the Black population. We are today in Broad County, 1,960,000 people and in South Florida, over 6 million. So we want you to come down and enjoy this rich history. Uh, you're gonna hear a lot from some of our businesses that are online, but we have the African-American Research Library and Cultural Center, one of the gems in our community, one of only five such facilities in the United States of America, where you can come and experience black history and black culture in a museum setting uh, right now. Anytime you want to come, you can be here for that. Uh, we have the old Dillard Museum, which celebrate the culture of black people in Broward County or music or, or fashion uh, or history. That's, that's a tremendous thing for you to enjoy. We have churches if you wanna go to church. Uh, we have about nine churches in Broward County, black churches that are over a hundred years old. And for many of you, you are familiar with the AME system the African Methodist Episcopalian, we have a lot, a lot, lots of those. And that uh, congregation started in the 1700s and is still strong and vibrant here in South Florida. So whatever your needs are, I'm sitting here actually in a beautiful park and maybe I'll get a chance to pan it a little bit to show you what it looks like. The only facility of its kind in North America, it is a International Cricket Council sanctioned cricket field. And I know most of you don't know what cricket is. You thought you think it's a, it's a bug. No, it's a game, actually. That's where baseball came from, so you know. Uh, we have that facility here. It's a first-class facility. And this year, we're hoping to have international cricket here again, uh, CPL in August. And in November, we're hoping to bring a team from India and from the Caribbean to play each other. So it is, again, a wonderful place for you to be and to enjoy life here in Broward County. Look forward to seeing you. Thank you, Commissioner Holness. You are a wealth of information and truly our number one ambassador for Broward County. And we appreciate all you do to make Greater Fort Lauderdale such a great place to live and visit. So thank you very much. So with that, I'm going to turn this over to Caitlin. There she is, who will be sharing some housekeeping notes. And again, I just want to thank all of you for joining us. And Please enjoy this web episode. It's going to be awesome. Caitlin. Thank you so much. I'll keep this quick here because we have a lot to, to go over. I want to mention that we do have handouts available. Um, these are available just for the live attendees. Um, it should be on your right panel there. And we do have some extra information on some of the businesses that are um, being interviewed today on this webisode. And then I also wanna mention that we do in, in our webinar series, we encourage for you to um, move around with the camera setting and um, make sure that you have the, the top, um, a little thin gray area on the top. If you wanna move that down a little bit so that you can make the cameras and all of these beautiful faces a little bit larger instead of the presentation. Because our presentations here, we really want you to see um, in, on the spot that they're in, they're in the museums or in the restaurants. Um, so that's really important, not necessarily the presentation. Okay, so you can play around with that, just make it a little bit larger, smaller. And then also there is a section um, where you can view everyone or view who's talking for the webcams. Okay, so if you have any um, problems there, you can, you can troubleshoot there where it says view everyone or view who's 
speaking. Um, we will be taking questions. You can type them in the questions area and we will get to those at the end of the presentation along with the question with the prizes. So I'm going to pass it over on to Gabe. Thank you, Caitlin. And um, that whole part about beautiful faces starts after me. So you guys hang in there. You'll get the you'll get to the beautiful faces in a few minutes. Panelists, if you could please uh, uh, turn your cameras off, we'll call you back up uh, in a couple of minutes. But thank you everyone for uh, joining us this afternoon. <clears throat> if you've seen one of these, you know that we like to do this. We like to start with some good news. Uh, and there are some good news in the horizon. Um, this comes from the Longwoods International Travel Sentiment Study. These folks have been doing this um, on a weekly basis since March. And um, the last one, which came from last week, uh, tells us that 81% of Americans plan to travel within the next six months. Um, that is 16 points uh, higher than it was in mid-January, and it is the highest they've registered since they started doing this, these uh, surveys. Um, we also, uh, in the international arena where I normally hang my hat, I've been reading some studies in, uh, in Spain, for example, there's a surge of interest in working through the travel trade. Um, uh, in Canada, there's been a, a, a really large surge of uh, internet searches for travel and travel related websites are the number one or the most visited sites. So not a lot of booking, not a lot of buying in Canada, but they are, they are, people are uh, looking to come, they're looking uh, to travel. So there are good news uh, and things are getting better. Uh, if we could go to the next slide, please, uh, Caitlin. Thank you so much for your help. Um, let's start with a little bit of a review. I know that most of you, if not all of you, know what we're going to go over in the next couple of slides. But you know, this is good refresher. But of course, Visit Lauderdale. Um, it's the marketing name for um, the tourism entity of Broward County. So we represent the entire county, not just the city of Fort Lauderdale, although Lauderdale is in our name. So it's 31 municipalities. We we try to get you to sell and visit all of them. Um, but do remember that. The, the developed area of Broward County is about a third of the land mass of the county, about two thirds of it to the west are still barely developed. So you get to see a little bit of nature, a little bit of wildness too, if you wanted to see that. Um, if you see our, our, um, our eight beach towns, 23 miles of beach, and of course all the canals and rivers throughout, which makes us a destination that is, was already suited to um, provide activities, services, experiences outdoors. So a lot of our restaurants and all the ones that you, that you will be getting to know today offer this opportunity to sit outside, which is of course all your clients uh, want to do at the moment. And so a lot of our restaurants have moved more capacity outside. So we are ready to, to welcome your you and your, and your clients. Um, but again, the activities um, is not just about eating, it's not just about the beaches. We have plenty of things to do outdoors, including visits to the Everglades. So right here in Western Broward County is where you where we have the start of the, of the Everglades Basin, a, a tremendous ecosystem that you ought to check out and you ought to recommend to your clients uh, whenever uh, you send people down here. But if, um, you know, there's also golfing and paddle boarding, all kinds of stuff to do. Um, and one thing that we rolled out a few months ago is this safe and clean pledge. So we have, it's a very simple commitment that our businesses, not just tourism businesses, but all kinds of businesses have signed on to, to take. And it is eight steps um, that assure that you and your clients will be safe and clean all throughout their stay from the moment they arrive. In fact, from the moment they get on the plane to the moment they, uh, they leave our destination, we are working together. Uh, to make sure that your clients can feel and be safe and clean. So today we will be introducing you to um, to, to black-owned businesses. But of course, as Mayor Holness, uh, Commissioner Holness mentioned, Tracy mentioned as well, we have a, a, a depth in terms of experiences, activities that have um, African American or black culture at the center. So you're going to be hearing about black-owned businesses. So it's, you know, it's uh, applies across the board, but also if you have clients that have that inclination, that interest, there's plenty of activities such as the Miramar Cultural Center. I think um, uh, um, Commissioner Holness mentioned the African-American Research 
Library and Cultural Center. It is a, it is part of the Broward County Library System, but it's also a museum, and it's got over 15,000 artifacts uh, on exhibit there. So really cool place, really interesting uh, part of our county. You'll be hearing more about that uh, from some of our our, our guests today. Um, so let's see, and Caitlin will help me with this. As you know, if you've been with uh, with us before, and if you know, if you haven't. Uh, please take uh, take the time to answer this question. We want to know what you are thinking. We want to know how you are feeling. We want to know what you're doing. And so what these polls do is uh, give us a little bit of insight into what our our stakeholders are are doing on on that part of the country. By the way, a quick note while you're taking this poll um, that Mayor Hol uh, Commissioner Holness mentioned a cricket game that is coming uh, this summer. Last time we did one of these, I, th I believe it was in 2019, we had the the, um, the um, national team of India play a team, a, a cricket team from the uh, from the from the islands, from the Caribbean, and of course, maybe for us in America it's not a big sport, but it, in India and the Caribbean is huge. So we had tons of people, for example, Indian communities from Michigan and Minnesota. Um, Indiana that came here for that for that game. So, so make sure to take advantage. That's going to be a big uh, a big event for us. And what did the uh, poll say? Are we uh, did we close it? Let me see here. Sorry, I think we had a little technical issue uh, here. No problem. No problem. Share. Let's see. Okay. Are you making it a priority to learn more about black owned businesses in the distinctions you book for your clients? And that's absolutely yes. Um, always have and always will. I like it. So again, those of you who are in tune and, and are curious about uh, this, uh, this side of our industry, um, you might have, you might know about these businesses, but if not, let us, uh, let us get rolling and let us introduce to you uh, some of the, the selection that we have chosen um, to present to you. So if we can, let's go to the next slide. And here we go. Let's see. Yeah. So Mike, if you could come back up. This is a, I like, I really like that we connected with uh, Mike, Michael Abel, and he'll tell us he, he and his wife uh, own and operate this business. They are based in Coconut Creek, which is on the western northwestern part of the county so uh, again we're representing from the north to the south from the east to the west so uh, michael take it away thank you so much for being with us thank you gabriel uh once again thank you very much everyone for being on board with this and i'm happy to be here and share swirl wine bistro uh, we are swirl wine bistro i am part of a two-person operation my wife is the chef i am just a chunky guy who gets to eat and drink really well um, we have a boutique restaurant that's located in Northwest Broward County, Coconut Creek. Uh, we can seat about 20 people comfortably and safe, uh, maintaining a proper safe distancing. Our menu is very unique. We, my wife has multiple degrees in culinary arts and she's trained around Europe for several years. And she was actually the banquet director for several businesses down, uh, down here in Florida, Miami, when we first came down. And we decided that uh, we wanted to give something to the people that we're from New York, and we want to give a kind of New York uh, dining and soul experience. Uh, so our restaurant is very quaint and cozy. I'm going to give you a little snapshot. You can see my little wine bar there. I've got some excellent wines that I curate from around the world. Doesn't matter, old world, new world. You'll see that we do also have some artwork on the wall. Uh, one of the biggest things that we like to do is support local artists. So the artists will come in, and every 120 days, we change out artists and allow local artists who did not get a lot of exposure to be able to come inside, hang their artwork, and hopefully sell some, and allow the residents in the neighborhood and everybody in the neighborhood to see what their what their friends have to offer. One of my buddies who's on the panel right now, Mr. David Beer, was one of the people who was kind enough to bless us with some of his artwork for many months, and it definitely was a welcome addition. Our menu stems from all over the globe. We uh, specialize in taking unique, uh, interesting um, foods and putting a Caribbean twist on it. We are Jamaican by descent, my wife's Jamaican, but we use the flavors of the Caribbean in combination with wonderful 
uh, European dishes, Indian dishes, it doesn't matter. We find something that we like, that we think you'll like, we're gonna put it out there for you. Uh, um, we do like, as I said, we have an incredible wine list. I constantly shift the wine list uh, by season and, uh, and to match many of the palates that are on the menu. We do have specials. Uh, we do a ladies night every Wednesday. Our happy hour extends for ladies all the way through. I do a happy hour uh, Tuesday through Friday from five to seven. That's $5 glasses of wine and exceptional wines. Um, as I said, we do have some outside seating. It's hard to see on the camera right here, but if you request it, I will set up a nice table outside with some linens, candles, everything for you to have. We are considered a wonderful date spot. So if you're looking to propose, you know, wanna have an anniversary dinner, we're the spot for you. As you can see, I'll show again, which is Mike, we we lost your audio. Yeah, it might have hit the mute button on next. There we go. We're back. Sorry. All right, so I quickly was showing you the sofas. If you feel like dating, you got a nice date, you want to take your spouse out or your girlfriend, we're a great spot to propose. We actually had four proposals last year uh, in, in our restaurant, and we're also a great meeting spot. So if you have a business meeting or social meeting or a corporate entity and you want to come and have something that is not in a crowd restaurant and you have the restaurant to yourself, we're your folks. And I thank you all again for allowing us to be part of this opportunity. And uh, you'll have some other great panelists on there that I've been to and friends with, and I think you'll enjoy what they have to offer. Thank you. Michael, thank you so much. You know, what I love about our job is I live in Coconut Creek and I, I still haven't been to your place, but uh, but I definitely have to make a stop out there. Um, you said that you rotate your wines, but how about how about the food menu? Does that, is that year long or do you also rotate with the seasons? Well, as my buddy David on the panel can tell you, we will play and shift with anything we can. So we're constantly creating new dishes. So there are anchored items that are fan favorites. So like our oxtail ravioli is our signature dish. It's known all around Broward County, even down to the M word. <laughs> and so, but we also create many different dishes. And like David will do for any customer that comes and says, I'm, hey. I'm jumping on here, Mike. Because I, I definitely, I wanted to make sure that everyone who's here makes this a priority that when you come to Broward County, when you come to Greater Fort Lauderdale, when you come to visit Lauderdale, that you definitely check out the food at Swirl Wine Bistro. It's definitely top five restaurant for me in all of Broward County, regardless of um, any you know cuisine specific, like, oh, it's Italian or it's Jamaican, like it's top five. So small spot, but wonderful for food. Um, and then of course, Mike knows his wines very well. I won't go into it anymore, but just uh, you need to ask this man to recommend or pair the wines with the food. He's, he's, he's a master. So, so folks, for those of you who are watching this, this has been fantastic because we are getting uh, organic endorsements from each other. So these folks have been talking to each other. Oh, yeah, I love your place and I love your food and I'd love to do this. So thank you all so much. Uh, Mike, thank you so much for being with us. Please thank hang you. around. Uh, we'll call you back up at the end. Um, but yeah, great segue. One thing before I introduce uh, David Muir is that we um, in in uh, visit Lauderdale all over um, Broward, you'll find that wherever you send your clients, th there there isn't a, 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 like a tourist area and a locals area. You send your clients, and we we locals will be hanging out too. So your clients get to feel the authentic Broward experience wherever they go. So uh, 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 Swirled Wine Bistro will be one of them. And then now I'd like to introduce David, who is with the Island Space Caribbean Museum, freshly open, brand new, uh, just opened their doors. I'll let you tell your story, but a place that looks amazing, uh, interesting, fantastic. Make sure, folks, to drag down that, that little bar so you see David's face and his place nice and big in the camera. David, the floor is All yours. Right. Thank you so much. And... I, I do want to say just, you know, somewhat piggybacking on what Commissioner Holness says, as a Broward County Commissioner, he has served us wonderfully. And he mentioned in his presentation that, you know, the African American Research Library is one of five in the United States. Um, I'm going to one up him a little bit by saying that the Island Space Caribbean Museum is the only one in the entire United States of America. There is no other Caribbean museum 
in the United States that represents all of the Caribbean. We celebrate all the islands as well as all nations that consider themselves to be Caribbean. So we are in a unique position. As a, as a, as a furtherance to what I just stated, we've done research and we have found nowhere else in the world. This would be the only place in the entire world that celebrates the entire Caribbean as one unified collective. And so uh, if there is something else different, I obviously welcome someone to inform us, but as far as we can tell, there is no other like this anywhere else in the world. What I will say in addition to that is that in terms of an experience, this is particularly unique. We are really about education. So the goal of what we do here at the Island Space Caribbean Museum is to let people know all who visit us are to learn about the people from the Caribbean. The reason we, we, we worked on and opened this particular space is specifically because we want people to know about our culture. We want people to know about our heritage. And we, without question, have a very special and unique story to tell. It is extremely similar to that of um, North America because we obviously have a very similar history but it is still distinct and distinct in this particular way within the caribbean and, and our nations we not only have that similar experience but we still have english um influence we still have spanish influence we still have that those from the french and those from the dutch and that we have islands that still are um only speaking the the the, the native tongue that was brought to them through colonialism um, we still have indigenous people we still have um, our own original music. And we have so much great original music coming out of the Caribbean. We have, uh, obviously, you know, the, the political divide of it's not just one, um, you know, unifying political system. We have so much interesting and different ways of identifying, but yet still have this great commonality of coming out of all that uh, is the history from indigenous people through colonialism, to slavery, to independence, to emancipation, all the different parts, but yet just unique to island life. And so it is, you know, with that uh, emphasis that we invite each and every one of you who are participating here to encourage the people who you are um, informing to come and to learn more here, to visit with us and to get, you know, that big culture that comes from the Caribbean as a part of their enjoyment in this area when they visit Lauderdale. I actually want to even jump a little bit further and say that I'm going to take you really quickly on a little bit of a tour, if we can. See, if you notice behind me is a, what we call a Junkunu um, outfit, which came to us from the Bahamas. The Bahamian government um, was so generous to give us that uh, donation um, for the museum. Um, I guess I'll walk this way. I'm in reverse now. Hopefully this is going to be entertaining. <laughs> I don't normally walk it in that reverse. But like, so behind me right here, let's see if we can get the image to, um, to be, ah, here we go. So here we have some of those sporting elements. So Commissioner Holness was speaking to you from the cricket stadium. And if you notice, we have a number of cricket bats, a cricket hat, a couple of cricket balls. We have these jerseys from the soccer teams that made it to the World Cup over here. We also have um, items from our musical heritage. So if you see, there's a banjo there, there's a rumba box, there is, a, you know, drums and so on. There's a um, number of different recording items. We also have, if we look, um, some of the costumery, the, the clothing that's worn um, on stage. Also, we have some of the various items. Now, over here, I don't know if those of you have heard about carnival, but we have a carnival costume as a part of that display. Right behind me on this side, we have, I don't know which way to go here. Ah, I'm terrible at this. I'm not the selfie guy. Um, but here we have religious items um, from the Caribbean as well. So we have a lot of different things. Ah, here we can look at some of the information. So you see like they're talking about religion. I hope you see this the correct way so that it's not back to front, talking about okay. Afro-authentic religions and so on. Um, but then even more so, we have like this humongous um, culinary display. These are items that are used to create 
all the different wonderful foods that our restaurants are talking about from the Caribbean. So if you look, we have from rolling pins to teapots to coffee makers, um, uh, mortar and pistols. We have all these different wonderful items of the history of, oh, look here. I, <laughs> so I'm kind of laughing. Uh, we have Caribbean Airlines. I think there's an Air Jamaica one in there. So we have a, a number of different things celebrating all that is to be Caribbean. And more so, again, other things here, the Dutch pots and the baking pins for all those um, rum cakes that we have. So this is just a little <laughs> glimpse, a little sample of some of the things that we have here on display at the Caribbean Museum. Island Space Caribbean Museum, get to know about us. Um, here, uh, that's a bath, and then there's a, it's like a little living room scene here, but I'm not really getting a, a great angle. There's a, a record player, a phonograph player, I don't know how we get that, an old ancient one, and so on. So we have a, a whole lot of different things to share, and I certainly encourage everyone to think of coming to visit, because this is really a, you know, a really amazing opportunity to learn about and to share in a completely different culture than what you are used to seeing. And there really is no other museum like this. So this is not your normal Broward County business. This is something that's one of a kind for the United States and the rest of the world. That is uh, excellent, David. Quick, um, uh, can you talk a little bit about pricing? Uh, Absolutely. There's, there's so, admission I'm prices so in, you in your location. Really so we are in the city of plantation we are at the westfield broward mall which is a very central location for broward county we, we like to think of ourselves as really the center of south florida at the crossroads of broward boulevard broward county and university drive so we're literally at the corner we're in the westfield broward mall we charge ten dollars for adults to come in and we charge five dollars for children anyone under 12 is five dollars so it's extremely reasonable. And we are always happy to work with any groups to create special rates or to give specific tours. If there's anything that's really needed, we'd love to accommodate guests. We also um, try to do specific events here. So we'll do cultural events and so on. So if there's a specific thing that is requested for a particular tour or for a particular group, we're always happy to facilitate. That's a big part of what we do here is to try to make ourselves accessible for education and informational sharing. That is that is lovely. And uh, folks, for for those of you who are not in Broward County, we started in um, Coconut Creek, which is the northwest corner. Plantation is sort of on the west side of the developed part of Broward County, but sort of in the middle. Very easy access. You can you can get uh, you can get on 595 and traverse the county east to west and west to east. Minutes from the airport. Minutes from the port. Minutes from downtown. So. Uh, very easy access, even though it's all the way on the west side of, of the county. So thanks, Dave. Please hang around. Uh, we'll I need know. you back. Uh, I hear we're getting a lot of questions, so so s stick around. We'll we'll get back to you in a minute. I'm Thank you so much. Um, so now we're going to uh, move uh, towards downtown or towards towards the east, although we will not, we will not get all the way to the coast. And we're going to talk to Chef Walter Harris with uh, the Noodle Station. Chef Harris, all yours. Hey, bro, thank you very much. Hello, everyone. My name is Walter Harris, and I'm the chef, uh, managing partner uh, over at Noodle Station in Fort Lauderdale. We're actually on the cusp of Oakland Park and Fort Lauderdale, uh, right at Oakland Park Boulevard and Federal Highway, southwest corner there. Uh, we're actually located uh, right next to, two doors down from one of the uh, longest standing music venues in South Florida, the Culture Room. Unfortunately, um, they, they closed their doors for, for now, uh, right when the pandemic started. Um, hopefully, they'll be reopening in the next few months here. Uh, we actually opened back in February, February 6th, after a good two-year process of build-out for the restaurant. A good month before everything kind of went crazy, but, uh, but we're still here. We're making it work. Uh, noodle Station itself, the concept is more of a build-your-own-style ramen noodle bowl concept. Uh, think like your bowl fresh kitchen or chipotle, but all noodle-based. Um, we have a full of an American twist uh, overall. We have uh, six different noodles to choose from, six different vegetables, four different proteins, three different broths. And for those of you who don't want to go the whole route of a broth, uh, we have stir fries also. We make our own, what I call a uh, nom nom 
sweet and spicy barbecue here in house that we can toss uh, whatever you create there, um, you know, in our kitchen. Uh, we're known for our, we have five base bowls. If you don't want to go through the whole building your own bowl process, which, which are quite popular, our American samurai, I call it, uh, is a beast of a bowl. You have uh, two different types of noodles in that, ramen and rice noodles. You get uh, bok choy, cabbage, corn, mushrooms, uh, sauteed, um, uh, I'm sorry, five spice chicken, beef brisket, pulled pork, uh, half an egg. We, we, we top that with our uh, chicken, oyster, ginger broth here. So um, a little history, a little background. Um, I've been fascinated with the Japanese culture since I was nine. I uh, grew up watching a lot of Japanese anime, reading a lot of the Japanese mangas. I uh, always wanted to go to Japan, and she made that a reality back in 2017. Uh, I was only there for 20 days, but it was enough to spur this 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 wants this uh, this this energy to get back to Japan as often as possible. I came back here to the states, gave my job of 12 years, a two month notice, took a leap. wasn't really sure what I was going to do, and and now I'm the owner of a uh, noodle based restaurant. So uh, give you guys a little little tour of the space here. Uh, this is our mural right behind me. I'm not sure if you can see that all that well here, but a uh, 45 foot mural um, uh, painted by one of our local artists out of Miami, uh, Carolina Sinelli. It's the kind of the heart of the restaurant there. You see the bowl, turn around this way here. Uh, our whole concept is basically, uh, we have seating inside, we do have a few tables outside, but uh, the whole concept is supposed to be more communal dining, which you see a lot of tourists in you know, Japan and stuff like that. Obviously, we didn't think that out before the pandemic, but there is seating. We, we definitely make a point to kind of space things out here for you uh, to kind of turn you around here to the main line. We have our menu here, uh, digital. Uh, you can see behind me, we have our different noodles there. We have, you know, your different uh, vegetables, your proteins, your broths as we walk down the line. So, uh, yeah, you know, like I said, we're, we're located in Fort Lauderdale. We're always doing something. Actually, tomorrow we have a comedy show. It's our second comedy show we're doing. Packed the house last time uh, we had that event. We also uh, do a lot of different acoustic sets. Uh, we have DJs. We have what I, what I like to call 90s and noodles, where we have uh, one of our local DJs come in and play nothing but the, the best of the 90s, as well as we make homemade uh, ramen and do more of a traditional style Japanese broth to talk to. Uh, with some pork bone based broth, crispy pork belly. That event goes over very, very, very well. So uh, there's always something going on here at the restaurant. We're, uh, like I said, we're about two miles, sorry, get the lighting here. We're about two miles from the beach, um, right off the Oakland Park here, Federal. Uh, when it comes to the airport, um, we're probably, it was about five, five miles or so from Fort Lauderdale Airport. So we're very, uh, we're kind of right in the middle of the mix, if you will, you know, not too far from the beach, not too far from downtown Fort Lauderdale. Um, yeah, we've, uh, like I said, our, 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 well, our concept here overall, uh, we try to, or well, the vibe in the restaurant overall is more of the, uh, I get, I get funky. I get, uh, people ask us all the time if we're, we're a franchise, uh, which, which we're not. It's our first noodle station. And we get asked, uh, you know, if we're a mom and pop, it's, it's kind of diverse in that sense, but we try to keep a really good energy here. I've gotten that on several occasions that the vibe is just really nice. And, uh, yeah, you know, we've, um, like we opened back in February and uh, we're making it work. It's been a year, actually February 6th. So we just actually had our year. Congratulations to us and all that sense. So, yeah. I, I think Walter. that, I think that uh, Walter, that, that really speaks to the resilience of not, not just you as a, as a business owner, as a chef, as a restaurateur, but our destination, this, you know, this in our country, our society, this, this, your story is not unique. I'm sure that folks, you watching out there, you have had to, deal with the effects of the pandemic as well and try to adjust and make space, uh, you know, space out your chairs or whatever that case may be for you. But uh, I wanted to ask you though, because your your concept and your inspiration is Japan, Japan and Asian culture. I mean, that's a broad swath of land because I mean, uh, <laughs> Vietnamese broths and bowls are different than Japanese and Northern Japanese. Exactly. But do you have, uh, do you include because we're in Florida, do you do you include uh, tropical uh, ingredients or you know things that you would find in Florida or in the Caribbean? I, I definitely take a mix. Um, you know, we're, we're definitely that mix between more Japanese and American. So a lot of our ingredients here are, are local, locally sourced in that sense. Um, uh, not necessarily tropical, but but definitely local. Working with a, uh, a farm right now that we get some of our scallion and stuff like that from. So I, I definitely I take that twist to it. So you get a lot. Of, you definitely get a lot of American ingredients, which some some of the traditional style uh, 
you know, like udon noodles or soba noodles and stuff along those lines. You know, it's kind of like a glorified, some of our bowls are kind of like a glorified chicken noodle soup, if you will, you know, with that background. Right. Of the we know it's good. It's good for you. And I know you, yeah. you're, you're right around, so you're right around that music venue, which we hope will come back up, but also you're you're real close to one of our biggest breweries or, or craft brews. So folks, if your clients have a, you know, a night out of, uh, you know, hard partying, please come to the noodle station <laughs> and, and recoup. This This stuff is good for everything, so. It's a perfect uh, hangover food too. Ex so. Exactly, exactly. So thank you, thank you so much. I, I don't want to be on every part, but I have okay. to just throw it in really. Another quick. endorsement, another endorsement, I, folks. I, I, I had dinner there last night, like totally unrelated to this call. And not <laughs> only is he, um, not only is the food great, but you know what? His hospitality. You know, he gave us, he brought us extra stuff. He was like, try this out. And he has his own signature sauce that he makes. I, I love spicy, and so he it, the sauce is amazing. So I just got to give it to you, Walter. That was awesome last night. Thank you. <laughs> Thank For the record, you. I didn't even know who he was at the moment. You know, and we're on the same panel here. <laughs> How about that? Yeah, yeah, that's excellent. Uh, thank you both. Thank you, uh, David, for that endorsement. Thank you, Walter, for being with us uh, this afternoon. Thank you. Um, and, um, I, so, folks, you know, we have uh, a melting pot of cultures, of foods, of flavors, of sounds, um, and we have so many things that we, we want to bring you, uh, more variety, but um, so um, here is um, uh, Stephen with uh, Vegan Fine Foods, Vegan Fine Cafe, and Vegan Fine Body. Uh, he's going to tell us a little bit more about uh, his multiple businesses. Thank you, Gabriel. Uh, yes, uh, I'm Stephen Smith here to uh, share with you some information about our business or businesses. So we have uh, Vegan Fine Foods, which is right in downtown Fort Lauderdale. Um, we are an all vegan market and cafe. So within Vegan Fine Foods, which you can see behind me, um, we also have Vegan Fine Cafe, which is our full service restaurant. We have a full menu. Uh, with everything from vegan burgers to wraps to sandwiches, tacos, and all types of things on our menu. Um, so the idea was born for Vegan Fine Foods and Vegan Fine Cafe. There are lots of vegan restaurants that are sort of sprouting up all over the country, which is a great thing. Um, but, you know, still not enough because the demand for plant-based foods uh, continues to grow at a very fast rate. So we definitely wanted to bring something unique to the space. And, you know, so we have our cafe, which we feel is a very unique menu in the uh, sort of vegan restaurant space. But we also have vegan fine foods, which as you can see behind me is a grocery store. So it's a grocery store with frozen, refrigerated and dried goods on the shelves that are all vegan. So anybody who wants to eat plant-based or they might happen to be vegan, uh, they can come here and shop uh, very comfortably, not worrying about any products or any animal-based products uh, uh, in any of our foods, whether it's in the uh, grocery side or on the cafe side. Um, so we have a very nice welcoming experience. And even though we are Vegan Fine Foods and Vegan Fine Cafe, about 75 to 80% of our customers are not vegan. So we welcome everyone. Um, folks just like to eat this way sometimes. And the food is so good, doesn't matter Really, whether you're vegan or not, you'll come and you'll have a great meal, a very tasty meal. And even more so, you'll have great customer service. So we'll treat you well and uh, look forward to uh, you guys visiting, all of you who are part of this, uh, this program. Um, now, as far as where we're located, we're right downtown in Fort Lauderdale um, in what's called like the Entertainment District or the Riverwalk District. So we're right across the street from the Broward Center for Performing Arts and the Museum of Discovery and Science. We're about, I'd say, between five and 10 minutes from uh, Fort Lauderdale Beach, maybe about 10 to 15 minutes from the airport in Fort Lauderdale. So we're very, you know, conveniently located for, for visitors to Broward County and actually visitors to South Florida in general. Um, we also have specials throughout the year. Um, now that uh, we have you know, we're, we're sort of getting through this pandemic phase. We're going to start doing our events in the store. We do all types of events. We have music, uh, live music. We do samplings. Um, and we also have cooking specials and that type of thing. So we're going to get that started up real soon. 
Um, so whenever you happen to be in the area, there'll be something good going on at Vegan Fine Foods. Um, and that's pretty much my uh, introduction for you folks. Thank you so much. And, 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 and folks, um, Vegan Fine Foods is literally steps from the river. So that's why he's in the, they're in the Riverwalk district, correct? I mean, you can just come out your door, make a left and you'll be right there. Um, you can walk to the Solas Boulevard shopping district um, across the way from the Broward uh, Center for the Performing Arts, very close, a walking distance to the uh, Science Museum, to the uh, NSU, Fort Lauderdale Contemporary Art Museum. So prime location right in the heart of, of the city, um, real close to the historic uh, uh, sites uh, about the foundation of Fort Lauderdale, all that. So really interesting place. So you can grab lunch one of those delicious uh, peanut butter cups that i see there on the picture and then walk around stroll alongside the river so yes and thank you gabriel and a few other things I, i'd like to mention as well so we're right across from esplanade park which mm. is you know a beautiful little park here right on the river so it's very very nice you can come relax in the park uh come get some food and then go sit in the park where we have outdoor dining uh the other thing i forgot to mention and i you can see it on the slides here we also have what we call the vegan bar so we have vegan wines, um, wine and beer, and different types of drinks that we offer. And another one of our really big favorites that people love um, are acai bowls. So we do acai bowls and we do cones, um, and we have you know all of our baked goods are done in house. So again, a wide variety of options. Whatever mood you're in, if you just want something to snack on, or you want a full meal, uh, or you want an acai bowl, we have it here at Vegan Fine Foods. Oh, excellent. Breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or in between. So uh, yes. thank you so much, Stephen. We'll, please hang around. We'll, we'll come back to you uh, at the end for some questions. Thank and you, Gabriel. Thank, thank you, you so much. I'd like to bring up um, uh, our next guest. And uh, uh, Mr. Andy Ingram is uh, the president and founder of the National Association of Black Hotel Owners, Operators, and Developers. And uh, so... He also does something else, and we'll get into that in a second, but I wanted to bring him on because um, his organization identifies um, uh, hotel properties, lodging that is either black owned or, or black leadership. And um, here in Broward County, he has endorsed two of them. So one of them is the Trip Maritime Fort Lauderdale is, uh, by Wyndham, is a, a fairly new hotel, probably a little bit over a year old. Great um, uh, mid range category, very approachable. Very good location, right on State Route um, 84, uh, right in the heart of the Yadding District, um, really close to the to the to one of the the biggest marinas. Um, and the also the other one is the Renaissance Plantation. So we talked about plantation when we talked about Island Space, Caribbean Museum. So the uh, Rena uh, the Renaissance Plantation is also uh, has been endorsed by the National Association of Black Owners. Black hotel owners and operators and developers. Um, a different category of hotel, different style of service. But you, you probably, if you saw the golf uh, episode that we did, um, then you heard about the Renaissance. But anyway, um, uh, Mr. Ingram, why don't you tell us just a little bit about um, the organization, very briefly, because I know we're running out of time. And then also, uh, Mr. Ingram also runs a series of um, heritage tours which are very interesting and I really want us to focus our time on on those because there's a lot of really great stuff and information that you that you uh, that you see there but uh, Mr. Ingram tell us about Nabhood and then we will talk about the the um, the tours sure thanks Gabriel thanks for having me great program all, all three of those restaurants I must try I, I'm afraid I've not been to either one of them but the presentations were excellent and guys look for me this coming weekend to try all three of them. But I think for us, the hotel business in Napa was was um, formed right here in Fort Lauderdale back in 2001 to create African-American hotel ownership. Our group uh, collectively own about a thousand hotels around the country. The two that you just mentioned, one is owned by Pyramid, which is a trip hotel, um, headed by Warren Fields, who sits on our board. Uh, Warren at one time also owned the Double Tree at Galleria, as well as the Marriott Courtyard at A1A in Las Olas. 
And of course, the other one, RLJ, um, owns the Renaissance, that is the president of the RLJ, is the only African-American woman to lead a hospitality company in the United States, and that is the third largest hotel company in the country. So we're expanding, looking for opportunities. Um, there are some development in the pipeline in South Florida. So the commission has been asking us to look at some locations, and we certainly want to expand as soon as the op opportunity presents itself. Then um, let's talk a little bit, because I loved about your tour is, that, again, we covered the entire county. So we have went northwest, then west, then east. Your tours start in Dania Beach, correct? And then you move throughout the city. Tell us a little bit about the uh, Black Heritage Tour. Sure. The Black Heritage Tour was to highlight the contributions of people of color, African-Americans, Caribbean. It begins um, in Dania which is known, was known at that time as the tomato capital of the United States um, because it produced a lot of tomatoes. We go to the Black Beach, we go down Sistrunk, and more importantly, uh, as part of the tour, we visit a Black-owned, Caribbean-owned restaurant where we can totally embrace the culture. The critical element is infusing tourism, including some of the um, businesses that we have in the community and for us, that heritage tour, three and a half to four hours long can be, we pick up folks at their hotel and we drop them back off at their hotel. So it's almost uh, customized to, to every group. Um, I was very curious to, to hear more about, I mean, I heard about this, but maybe our audience wants to, to learn a little bit more about the, the well, the, it was called the Colored Beach back then, right? And then the old uh, Dillard Museum, That's those two are really interesting stories. Absolutely. The beach um, was John Lloyd Park. It's now has been reno renamed as the Von B. Mizell Eula Johnson State Park. And John Lloyd um, was a former county administrator. And prior to African-Americans being allowed to go to the beaches in Fort Lauderdale, which uh, one of the photos that we have is a group of African-American, including um, Mizell, or Von D. Mizell, um, going out to the Fort Lauderdale beach and wading in the water. Stop. Um, some of them went to jail, but they had a series of um, wade-ins to integrate the beaches. And so, at that time, they were restricted to the Colored Beach in Dania, John Lloyd Park, but we didn't have a bridge back then, or they didn't have a bridge back then. So in order to get to the beach, you had to take a rickety ferry. If you can imagine on holidays, those beaches would be crowded. There was nice shade cover. So it was a great beach. The other part of our tour, and we talked a little bit about that, and today, um, Eula Mae Johnson, um, Ayula Johnson is the former president of the NAACP. As a young student, when I came here to Fort Lauderdale, I had a chance to become a member of the NAACP and work with her. Today, her house is right off of 6th Street and is a historic center, but she was a great contribution. Dr. Mizell, um, the Mizell family is a, is a staple in Fort Lauderdale, in Broward County, and their contribution the Mizell Funeral Home um, that today still is on Sistrunk Boulevard. The Dillard Museum. Um, the Dillard Museum housed the first black school in the county. Um, it, was, um, it was interesting that when you think about it, um, schools open uh, first for uh, kids in Fort Lauderdale, but essentially, Blacks were relegated to attend one school, and that school at that time was the Dillard School that became the old Dillard Museum. Kids that attended that school um, had a shortened school year. Um, they had to leave school early uh, during the day so that they can go out to Tamarack at that time to go in the fields and pick beans. Um, Keep in mind that anything west of um, 
441 was all farms and bush and woods. And so today it looks very different. Um, you heard yeah, David. It's subdivisions yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you heard David talk about the Broward Mall, and um, yeah. today uh, Broward has come a long way. Um, but that school today is now a museum, and you can find a lot of cool items there. Our first tour director, um, Mr. Bradley, James Bradley, whose father was the first ice house man in Fort Lauderdale, first African-American ice house man, used to conduct our tours in some of the stories he told about um, Broward County and going to school here in Fort Lauderdale was interesting. Um, and so we think it's a great part of our culture that we can export to our visitors who look for diverse diversity when they come to a destination. And, and these are uh, for certain included in the tour. Um, I know that there was a slide there with uh, with uh, some uh, pricing, but it runs about $29.95 uh, for adults and $19.95 for children. But folks, you're getting uh, something that is almost personalized to you or to your clients. So keep that keep that in mind. Stay in touch with uh, Mr. Ingram. Andy, thank you so much for your time. Please hang around. We're going to wrap this up very quickly because we're running out of time. Um, and uh, folks, um, everything that we're going to uh, discuss now or the next couple of slides you can all find at sunny.org sunny.org slash travel dash trade sunny.org slash travel dash trade you'll find information about our travel academy our travel agent academy um, remember that when you graduate from the academy um, you can uh, you will be admitted into a private Facebook group and uh, we're constantly posting information that is related to you but also recommendations informations on on port hotels airport hotels um uh, itineraries suggested itineraries uh, uh, cruise deals travel agent deals all kinds of things are found there our virtual webinars our e other episodes how to register for upcoming episodes all of it is there um if you have or your clients have children make sure to uh, check out our junior ambassador program educational series for kids and uh, as always always follow us uh, leisure lauderdale on facebook and instagram is a page as content for you as a member of the travel trade and then our general pages um youtube instagram uh facebook everywhere is visit lauderdale but that's more directed to the, to the consumer but with that we should be done so leisure lauderdale and visit lauderdale follow us both uh, on, on those both, but um, uh, Caitlin, if you want to come back up and if you have questions, I, I, we're, we've run out of time, but maybe our audience can give us a few more minutes to get through the, the, a couple of questions for the crew. Yes, absolutely. We have many questions, um, so we might have to answer them individually, but I'm going to read a few um, that may um, be good for the overall um, overall okay. attendees here. So let's see, um, we've got there. Um, does anybody, I think if we can bring on maybe David, some of the other panelists, we have a question here that, um, what about a place for some great jazz clubs, African-American music? Do we have any recommendations out there for that? That was not included in this and webinar, but I think if, everybody wants to know that. If all the panelists can come back up, um, if, we, if you wanna give a recommendation, Let's make it quick and snappy because uh, we we're we're at the limit of our time. David, David you're I think you're muted. Uh huh. Anybody else have a good jazz club recommendation? While well, David's on mute, even though he says he's not. Let's see. Yeah, there's Everybody. a jazz club downtown Fort Lauderdale, African American owned, right off of Sixth Street. I'm trying to locate the name of it right now, but it has great jazz um, right um, down, downtown from the courthouse. If any of the panelists have the name of it's, it, is it the NY, the New York S Southwest Jazz Lounge? NYSW? Yes, that's a, it's a great yeah. place. Great place and a restaurant as well. Awesome. Okay, another question for. Um, Let's see, the noodles, noodle station. Are the noodles made fresh or are they in a traditional way? Do you ha have information on that one? 
You're on so mute there. Our, our, okay. You're good. So I, I make the ramen myself. I make the ramen, uh, but the the udon, the soba, those things I have I tried and I I can't perfect those at all. So <laughs> I've uh, I do make the ramen here, uh, make the broths okay. here in house. Awesome, very uh, good. Bow buns too, the open face bow. I, I always forget to mention those. Those are amazing. You know. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, we can't wait. There. We're coming there soon. Okay, next question. Mike, um, over at Swirl, do you have any vegetarian items on your menu or vegan? We do, do. We have a couple of different items that are veg both vegetarian and vegan. And if you call and tell us what your uh, restrictions are, your dietary needs, or whatever your food preference is, we'll make something for you. Nice. Awesome. Thank Very you. Nice. I love that personal touch. Okay. And then over at the Vegan Fine Foods, are you open? What are your hours of op operation? Are you open daily? Uh, we are open six days a week, so we are, and this is sort of post-COVID, so we'll, mm -hmm. we're open uh, Tuesday through Sunday. Um, from We open every day at 10 a.m. On Tuesday, we close at 6 p.m., and then the rest of the week, Tuesday through, sun, Tuesday through Saturday, we close at 7 p.m., and then Sunday at 5. Okay. But we're going to okay. expand those shortly, so that's sure. where we are right now, but we will be expanding them. Awesome, thank you. Okay, and so for the Black Heritage Tours, um, do you offer step-on guide services if somebody has their own transportation? Because we work with some advisors that already have busing and things like that. Absolutely, we have step-on tour guides that can meet the transportation and start the tour customized exactly the way they want it. Okay, no awesome. Very good, thank you. And for all of you, do you have any keto items on your menu? Very yes. specific menu questions here today. I think everybody's hungry. <laughs> so, so everybody should learn that the, the, you have to attend these, these programs with a, 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 a full oh. belly. You can, yeah, you yes. can't be hungry. It's a struggle. And, and then we have a question here um, for the museum for Island Space. Um, do you have a special rate for advisors to come visit you? We don't currently have an advisor's rate, but again, anyone who's coming, I would just absolutely suggest you reach out to us. Um, you can go to islandspacefl.org and you can, you know, reach out, uh, email us. We'd happily accommodate um, any specific group and, and, and or advisors so that we can, you know, encourage the business. So we are uh, absolutely friendly sharing space and we encourage people to just reach out and we can make special rates accordingly thank you so thank much you so okay much. so a lot of people are asking we will be sending you the recording of this webinar i know there was a lot of information here so you will automatically be sent the recording if you are registered for this webinar and then we will also have it available on our website on sunny.org slash tra um slash travel dash trade and or just sunny.org and you can find travel trade on the top and that's where we house all of this information so just give us a couple of days and this recording will be sent there as well okay so you can reach out and we will also be following up with you so that you can get all of the contact information of our panelists today um and hey, yes. hey, one quick note maybe we can work collectively as a group where we can develop a specific program that the cbb can use to encourage advisors and sales reps and travel agents to come out and visit our facilities, our restaurants, our museums with special pricing and special, I'm sure we can come up with something that will help get the message out as part of our marketing budget. So something Gabriel, Caitlin, Tracy, you should um, look that um, I'm sure I'll be happy to coordinate with the rest of the team and make it work. The more- Certainly get Thank some you. Yes. advertising out there the better it is for all of our businesses certainly agreed now let's get on um before i know that some people had to step off and some people are saying take your time we appreciate everybody all the engagement has been Very amazing much. um so thank you we're going to go to a couple of prizes so the first prize we have offered up today was from swirl wine bistro thank you so much so what do you have today for us it was it a 50 dollars gift certificate to your business Yes, it's a $50 gift card. Awesome. Thank you so much. And what was your trivia question? So the trivia is, we're located in Coconut Creek, but what well-known gaming institution are we close to? Oh, and we forgot to say, everybody must 
um, put in their answers in the question area. So you can type in the first one to answer that correctly. We will read off your name. And we're looking through it here. See, close, close, Patricia. <laughs> it's a field, no, almost, there is a field there, yes. <laughs> All right. Very good, Neil Miller. Yes. He got it, he got it. All right, Neil, Neil Miller, very good. All right, we will be contacting you, Neil, for that. Mike, why don't you All give right. us the answer? I'm sorry, it is the um, Seminole Coconut Creek Casino. Correct. Perfect, yes, thank you, Neil. We got a, we got a lot of people that almost had it right, almost. Yes. <laughs> the Hard Rock is a little bit further south from there, but yes. I think between have... Coconut Creek and Cricket and Casino and all of that, people are <laughs> confused. <laughs> too much information. <laughs> all right. And next we have two tickets, two um, complimentary admission tickets to the Island Space Caribbean Museum. So what do you have for a trivia question for us, David? I, I would like it if someone could answer I, I mentioned the different languages spoken in the Caribbean. If someone could answer, name one nation, one country that represents each of those languages. So if you can list four countries that represent English, Spanish, French, and Dutch, we would love to offer you two tickets to the Caribbean Museum today. We need four nations. Four nations, four nations. in the Caribbean. So it could be anywhere in the Caribbean Sea or in the bordering um, uh, to the sea. So it could be at the tip of South America or Central America. Once it's touching the Caribbean Sea, and we consider them our Caribbean nations. So one of each, one English, one Spanish. Folks, did you get that? Aha, here we go, here we go. Here we go, here's the yeah. San Martin in Cuba. Okay, I think Barbara got it. What? That was quick, Barbara. Yeah. Oh yeah, my yeah, goodness. Got, yeah, they're coming in. I can't read it fast enough. <laughs> awesome. So we welcome uh, you. Look forward to your journey here. All right, so these prize winners, we will contact you via email so that you can get in touch to redeem your prizes. Thank you so much, Barbara Ballard. You are the prize winner there. And I think that's it for now, right? I We're a couple minutes over, can but I, can um, I Tracy? Sneak one, can I sneak one yes. bit of information? I just have to say this. So you know, to my good friend, Andy, who has been speaking, and he you know, represents a lot of what is to be Bahamian, and because Bahamas is, to me, the only nation that does not sit in the Caribbean Sea or touch the Caribbean Sea, because they're in the Atlantic, and yet they're Caribbean. So they're a special, like, this most special Caribbean nation of all, because Bahamas is in the Atlantic Ocean, yet we celebrate them as Caribbean. <laughs> yeah, with, with, with the, 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 the United States. So, yes, you're right. Um, but the Caribbean is a great family of islands, and we're just happy to be part of it. Absolutely. That, that that the costume right behind me, straight from the Bahamian government. I, I love the Junkanoo costume. I sent you a couple of pictures of ones that we have. I want to send them over to you and see if you can use them. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much, everybody. And Tracy, any final words? Just want to say that um, thank you all for your enthusiasm, your compassion for our community. We had so much fun, like the little one there. Um, really, you've raised the bar for us. So, um, everybody have My a great day. Just join me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is a business for generations, right? Thank yeah. you all so much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, bye bye. I'll be seeing you guys soon. That's right. <laughs> bye bye. Thank you. Take care.